Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. This show is brought to you by AAAFX and Amanda Waterpark and British International School Phuket. We're going to be talking about some headlines from across Thailand, starting with the Thai cabinet has finally agreed to let foreigners buy land and houses in Thailand. Hooray! But before you get too excited, it's not applicable to everyone. A major decision was made today by Thailand's cabinet, which will allow foreigners to buy houses and land in Thailand, just like I said. The foreigners will be eligible to buy houses and land if they invest at least 40 million baht in Thailand and can maintain that investment over three years, according to the news. Mm. And the land purchase cannot be bigger than one rye, which is appro approximately 1,600 square meters under Section 63 of the Land Act. Now, the new law will come into effect one month after its publication in the Royal Gazette, which will be soon, said the cabinet. The initiative will be effective for five years, and the proposal was put forward by the Ministry of Interior early this year to pull foreign investment into the kingdom. Wealthy foreigners can buy houses and land up to one rye if they invest in any of the following bonds issued by the Thai government, real estate mutual funds, real estate investments, capital stock for juristic person, activities or companies operating under, under the BOI. Now, there's a full uh, list of detailed, um, you know, detailed information on w how you can qualify on the tiger.com so uh, if you do want more information on that please uh, read the article on the tiger.com um, for now I'm going to move on and talk about um, the fact that foreigners applying to buy land or houses must produce evidence of their investments the foreign investor may buy houses or land in Bangkok Pattaya or another residential area under Thailand's town planning laws so it's not everywhere in Thailand, I'm guessing. Foreign investors are not permitted to purchase land or houses in military zones. Uh, it must be for personal use and uh, to apply for or to buy a house. The foreigner must submit an application to the Director General of the Land Department, who will seek approval from the Ministry of Interior. Once the application is approved, the investor must inform the local land department within 60 days. And if the buyer withdraws the investment, they must inform officials within 60 days. Foreign foreigners are only eligible to buy one rye of land once. Once. That's right. The limit will apply even if the investor sells parts or all of the land. Oh, okay. So a one-time deal. Yes. Got it. Yes. The initiative hopes to attract wealthy expats, retirees, digital nomads, and people with special expertise. Mm. What do you think, Natty? I like that they limited it to be for personal use yeah. and not for investment purposes because mm -hmm. you could have just bought a land and then just take off and like resell the land, right? Getting capital gains. And then the lo the poor locals are like, Hmm. I can't buy that land and now you've doubled that price and I can still not buy that land, you know? So if it's for personal use, they buy the land, they live there, I think yeah. it's fair. Yeah, I think it's for fair. their house. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I, I, think, I think when they first started talking about this, uh, this change in Thailand, it was a couple of months ago and people were afraid like oh what if these investors come and take up all our land and this and that and they shouldn't be able to some people were like cool but yeah it, this is a niche this is for people who are proper businessmen and entrepreneurs and people who are wealthy mm. no matter what field they're in 40 million baht n not everybody has 40 million baht to invest and uh and sustain be for three eligible. years yeah and sustain yeah. it for three years and then be eligible to buy land for their own personal use for example there are people who fall through the cracks like me i've been here 20 years i've definitely not invested 40 million baht in thailand and unfortunately even though i've been here for 20 years there's no uh eligibility for me to purchase a home which is slightly upsetting and sad but it's okay you make it sound so sad you can buy a condo and condos in phuket are essentially villas they're big they're huge and you can own those why would i want to own a condo in phuket Though. I don't know. I'm just saying like, or yeah, you no. can own a condo in Bangkok. And when I say condo, you can own a penthouse even that is just as good as any one rye farm plot of land in Samut Sakhon, say, you know, it's well, just as good or not better. There will always be choices. Yes. But maybe I don't want to own a condo. Maybe I want to own a house. Oh. I won't be able to buy a house. Well, okay. Well. Right. I mean, 
I live in condos in Bangkok because I I have no choice. But uh, what I mean is like there's a lot of people, not just me. There are a lot of there are a lot of expats here who might have not invested forty million baht and who might not fill in this criteria, but they can't they can't buy a house. It's it's a bit sad. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm a guest in this country, and I won't argue with the laws or anything. I just wish that they would allow, you know, maybe have more criteria where expats who've been living here for a long time, uh, uh, expats who have grown up in Thailand as kids, you know, like for example, me, like I, I'm a young, young generational person in in Thailand. It would take a quite a while for me to invest that amount of money and sustain it for three years, then be able to buy a house. Yes, there are many other ways, but I'm just saying there's there's some people who fall through the cracks. Mm. And um, yes, I can own a condo, but if I can own a house, why why wouldn't I want to? There's so many foreigners who feel upset about this law, but the thing is, Thailand's not alone in this. You know, like there's a lot of our neighboring countries also have similar laws that foreigners cannot own lands. If anything, the UK, Switzerland, Australia, even are putting stricter restrictions on foreigners buying land because what happened in let's just take Australia for example, people. Mm, I'll just say a nationality. Chi- rich Chinese people go mm-hmm. and buy lands in Australia. Buy, 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 buy until the whole town becomes like the the locals cannot buy their own property because people from China have already t- taken all the land, and now the locals have to rent out from Chinese people. So if it's reverse, why is it that a white person buying a land in Thailand? Like we have to accommodate that, but when it's the other way around, like oh no no no, foreigners shouldn't be able to to buy land. Like you have to look at it. Like, it's a similar situation. Yeah, but we're not talking about it. We're talking about one rye land once. So that's me being able to buy my house that I've been living there for the last ten years. I wouldn't be able to, right? This is not Chinese investments. But I I understand. Like those laws have been. Uh, come in place because of situations like that and maybe it's going to take a long time while uh, Thailand does allow that land uh, to be purchased uh, by foreigners. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. For now, uh, they've taken the first step and uh, if you do fall into this category, then good for you. You'll be able to buy one row of land. Um, Let's move on to our second topic, which is regarding a YouTuber, a Thai YouTuber who was actually kidnapped. He's a surgeon, but also a YouTuber. Uh, from Thailand, and he decided to travel to Africa. Uh, his name is Dr. Noparat, uh, also known as Ma Song. Song? Ma Song. Ma Song. And he's returned to Thailand now safely uh, Tuesday morning after being held captive for 20 day, 25 days in Mali, West Africa. Now, Basically, what happened is I'll give you a conclusion. Uh, the doctor, who's also a very enthusiastic and adventurous YouTuber, he makes a lot of videos traveling and he decided to travel to countries that I wouldn't say would be the top of the list of most people. Now, from September 12th to October 3rd, he went out exploring nine countries, which include Afghanistan, Chad, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Now, his videos about his trip in Africa uh, stopped on September the 27th when he said he was about to leave Burkina Faso and cross into Mali. The foreign minister said on Monday that he was kidnapped in the city of Mali and uh, he was only released after he paid about 100 million CFA francs, which is about 5.7 million baht, ransom to the kidnappers. Uh, In a phone interview he conducted on Tuesday with local media, he said he had hired a trusty tour agency and informed them to arrange a safe route for him. Uh, He said he got got lost, basically, and uh, was uh, abducted after him and his guide were basically lost and couldn't find each other in, in a crowded place. So, yeah. What do you... No, no, no. Like, okay, so he, he's already back in Thailand now. He's safe. It's great to have him back. Uh, he hasn't actually talked to the press and media yet. He will be coming out with a statement. But what do you think about this whole situation about him going to the, like, Burkina Faso, Afghanistan, you know, like Mali? Like, you think he has kind of put himself into danger ish <laughs> i i like I, i'm a scaredy cat yeah i'm gonna mm. admit it and yes it's not good to stereotype and it's like you know but for me would i travel for holiday to make content in afghanistan or mali 
if I had a choice, preferably not because mm -hmm. I don't know the area. I'm a scaredy cat. I'm not. Maybe I'm not adventurous enough. But I'd I'd feel a sense of danger that I don't f I don't n I'm going into uncharted territory and I don't want to risk it. Mm. Do you, would you feel the same or? Yeah, I would feel the same. I, I I share the same sentiments as you, but that's only because like we're not content like extreme content creators mm. and that's the problem with social media nowadays i feel personally that people in order to make it things go viral in order to have more eyeballs on your content you have to create more shock factor do more daring things do mm -hmm. things that are not like ooh, a little bit taboo to get those views but what are you trading it off with your life your safety your health you know yeah. so that's something that people need to think about when you're creating your social media content how far are you willing to go and that's a little bit of a problem, I think, in society. We just, are we chasing the right things now? Is it all about the views and the likes and the validations that you get from social media? Is that what is important? What is important? Let us know. You can comment on the video below. That rhymed. <laughs> well, you sound so proud. I did, because I didn't face. mean to rhyme it. Nice. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, we've got more stories regarding an update on the club, uh, Club One Paria. Uh, more juicy information on the club that was recently uh, raided for drugs. And also we've got a story from Got Thou and Rare Flowering Plants. Find out more after the break. Thinking of investing, mm -hmm. but don't know where to start? Mm -hmm. Ever heard of AAAFX? What is AAAFX? Good question. Look no further than AAAFX, your choice for trading and investing. Low commissions and spread with fast execution. They're trustworthy and have been offering services since 2008. You can invest using various deposit methods including crypto with negative balance protection and 100% matching deposit bonus. Choose AAAFX and enter the lucrative market of trading. Visit AAAFX.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let me fix my mic. This show is brought to you by AAAFX. If you're into cryptocurrency, foreign exchange, or just want to make any trades, visit the website of AAAFX and make your first trade now. But of course, be responsible, test the waters before you go in deep. All right. Um, also, Jamarcus Campbell has returned. Ooh, hello. He's a Tiger member. He's rejoined oh, us. Thank so thank you. you very much, Jamarcus Campbell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the full <laughs> service. <laughs> thank you, Jamarcus, for uh, supporting the channel. We appreciate it. Nettie, we sent out a poll yesterday mm. regarding fake banknotes. Mm. Now, police are warning the public against counterfeit 1,000 baht banknotes that have been found circulating in Udon Thani province. Have you ever come across a fake banknote in mm. Thailand? 94% said no. 6% said yes, apparently. Now, I was more intrigued with the people who said yes. Mm. So I've, I've uh, taken a comment from William Hartz who says, I wouldn't know it since I do not examine my bot notes, but the Thai banks certainly examine my U.S. dollar notes. <laughs> One mark or a wrinkle in the note isn't acceptable for exchanging. I don't know if it's a mark or a wrinkle. It's true. A Absolutely wrinkle? true. Absolutely really? true. Because I remember exchanging my U.S. dollars back into Thai baht, and they're mm. like, oh, we can't because there's a crinkle. I'm like, it's a cr It's not even a crease. So what are you supposed to iron it out? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. So I couldn't exchange that one. What a ridiculous thing. Because yeah. in, America, as, as, uh, in America, as long as the serial number is not torn, you can, you can have a torn note and return it to the bank and they'll give you a new one. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. That's Ty. why cryptocurrency is the new way to go. No, is just joking. It, just though? joking. <laughs> <Is it though? laughs> Wrong timing. <Nettie. laughs> Wrong timing. Wrong. Bangkok Doug says, counterfeit money is a real problem in Thailand. Every day I seem to end up with the same in a wide range of notes from 20 baht to 1,000 baht. 20 baht notes? Apparently. Hmm. Uh, lucky for me, my wife is an expert in spotting fake notes and confiscates them. Bangkok Doug, I'm guessing he's from Bangkok, but... Really? 20 baht? 1,000 baht? It seems like a very normal thing for Doug. Mm. And well, why is it so normal? Where, I don't know. Where, which part I've of Bangkok are you living in? I've never come across a fake <laughs> note in my life. I've been oh. here for, excuse me, I've been here for like 20 years. Wow. Uh, but uh, hey, we're glad that we're glad that uh, your wife's there to help you out, Doug. Good on her. Mm. Uh, Info says, I only ever get 1,000 baht notes from the ATM, and I would hope the bank is able to tell the real from the fake. True. Difficult to get a fake note from the ATM. Yeah. However, I would 
definitely not be surprised. Anything's mm. possible here. All right, we've got two stories regarding bars and clubs. Let me give you a quick update. Yesterday, I spoke about Club One Padilla. Mm. Now, the shocking story of Club One Padilla drug raid keeps getting juicier and juicier. Sunday morning, there was a raid. At the police, the poli- f- about four police officers came into the club. They wanted to raid uh, the club to find out if anyone's using drugs. All the patrons in there, about 200 people, said, Nay, I will not be tested today. I will not go down. And they basically rushed the police and all escaped. And uh, the owner then came out and complained that he already had a deal with the authorities to avoid raids. So how dare they raid my club? Now police suspect also that a Chinese national with an extensive criminal history is the true owner of the club and police are also angry uh, and they say that there's going to be a five-year closure of the club. Five-year closure? That's right. I think for snitching on the police, like, I believe. Here we go. Angry government officials vowed to pursue charges against the manager who made the original statements saying that he had a deal with the authorities. Oh, come on. And now the authorities are bringing down the hammer on the entire Club One party operation. Offended police officials are demanding another inspection of the club and its licensing paperwork and permits to see if it was operating illegally. The Shunbury governor will be presented with a proposal to enforce the National Council for Peace and Order Clause. Yada, yada, yada. They're going to try to basically check if the Chinese national is a real owner of the club because he's also uh, has a long rap sheet of money laundering and drug charges. Yikes. Basically what's happened is that manager should have never, even though if even if he did have a deal, allegedly, had a deal with the authorities, he shouldn't have come out and said it because now they are bringing down the hammer. They're oh, saying, no. oh yeah, oh yeah, we had a deal. All right, let's do another inspection. Let's check if your paperwork is in order and if if and, and let's see who your real owner is. I wonder how they know that the real... So all of a sudden, in about two days, they figured out that there's a Chinese owner with money laundering and drug charges against him. So what's the moral of the story here, Nettie? Mm, don't own a club in Pattaya. And if you do own a club and if you do pay authorities, then... Don't snitch on the police. Don't talk about it. Don't, yeah, don't snitch. This is a horrible <laughs> moral of the story. Moral of the story is... Do things legally. I yeah. think that's the better one. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Uh, we've got now a story of, of a bar on Got Dao. More raids. Everyone's being raided. But this one is a happy raid, in quotations, okay. because a bar named Dizzy Bar on Got Dao Island... Uh, it's in the province of Surathani, was raided on Saturday night after police discovered the establishment was offering laughing gas balloons to partygoers at 100 baht a pop. You mean, sorry, you mean the ones that are available at Kasan Road? Yes. Oh, so okay. the balloon ones, I'm guessing yeah. like, like, hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Joel. Okay. Anyways, should I continue with that yes. voice? Yes. <laughs> really? I no. Okay. So officers <laughs> also discovered that the bar did not have an operating license. Officers revealed that nitrous oxide is a popular new drug amongst party goers in Thailand. After inhaling the gas from the balloon, a person becomes more relaxed, which makes them feel happier and encourages laughter. Now, the bar's 38-year-old manager, we still don't know who the owner is, was arrested after police found the evidence, including receipts for alcohol purchases, laughing gas balloons, and a nitrous oxide cylinder. So the manager has been faced with three charges. Number one, operating an entertainment venue without a license. Number two, selling liquor over a legal limited time. And number three, selling drugs, which is the nitrous oxide gas without permission. Yes. I love how the nitrous oxide balloon is highlighted as in this is something absolutely shocking. How dare they do this in Got Thou? These balloons are available in Kasan Road. I didn't even know that they were illegal, to be honest. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are doing illegal things without knowing that they're doing in illegal Thailand? things in Thailand. How, how dare, dare they? they? That's bad. That yeah. is bad. But it's a, it's a, it does have <laughs> fatal effects on users. Because if you do use it quite often, apparently it it's not good for the lungs. It can cause yeah, heart attacks. Yeah, even don't yeah. do it. I yeah. mean, you know, they call it laughing gas, but uh, yeah, it has a the chemical name is nit. What is it? Nitrous oxide. I guess so. It nitrous oxide. Good. Yeah, I'm doing some nitrous oxide. Eh. That sounds <laughs> scary, but I'm doing yeah. the laughing gas. Sounds fun. A lot, a lot more fun. And Chill. it's in a balloon as well. It's <laughs> oh, in a colorful so balloon. 
Yeah. My friend used to do that. Hey, but it wasn't in she Thailand, was, right? She was Korean. Yeah, in Thailand, in oh, Kaosan. I'm trying to get your friend out of here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm, this is her name, and this is where she works. <laughs> but, like, yeah, she would do it, and then it would, like, make her faint for about five faint? seconds. Faint? Yeah. Whoa. So she would faint for five seconds, and she would get up. And have a Mickey Mouse voice? Yeah. Hello, my name is Kim yeah. jong Su. Yeah, so some people have that effect. Some people mm. actually, like, faint for about four or five seconds, and then Aww. they get back up. Nice. Yeah. People do stupid stuff when they're younger. Yeah. yeah. Not me, though. Not us. Not me. Yeah. Have you ever tried laughing gas? If you have, don't do it in Thailand. It's illegal, apparently. Mm. So uh, <laughs> that's the update for now. We're going to take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about a rare flowering pa- plant and a naked burglar. Find out more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand. This show is brought to you by BISP. We're going to British International School Phuket very soon. We will be there in November. We will be doing GMT live from the school. Now, you might think to yourself, wait, you're doing live from the school? Where are you going to be? In a classroom? <laughs> oh. There are actually really cool places at the school itself. Where, and we'll try to move uh, every maybe one or two days oh, that to show fun. you the different facilities. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, maybe we'll get into my old classroom one day. Oh, can we? Maybe oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll awesome. raid the physics lab or something. <laughs> I don't know. Physics lab. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, one of the best schools in Thailand. Visit uh, the link in the description if you'd like to find out more. To, if you want to send your child or loved one for a great education. All right. Talking about education. Our next story is revolving a flowering plant. A rare flowering plant has been found in the south of Thailand. I feel like a lot of uh, things are being discovered in Thailand recently. Yeah, so we found a the new species crab. of red yeah. crab tarantulas in january and new species but this is the latest one so uh, biology researchers from chiang mai university found the plant in an evergreen forest in danet and sukirin districts now the rare flowering plant belongs to the anno i can't say this word anonaceae anonaceae family which is the same species as the custard apple family or the soursop family have you ever had custard apple before Noina. Yes, I love it. It's oh, so it's good. so yum Custard yum. Apple is yums. Yeah, yeah. it is the but yums. It's not as popular in Thailand, is it? <gasps> what are you talking about? It's super popular, no. but I don't think it's popular outside of Thailand. Really, it's very popular in India. Oh, Jingle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I think Southeast Asian countries love having custard apple. Mm. But what I mean by that is that you know when you're walking down the streets, you see uh, tangbong, watermelon, mango bananas but very rarely do i see people selling custard apple i think it's a seasonal know. fruit that's yeah, why but you have to know where to buy it too it's not like you know rambutan when it's the season of rambutan you know people in trucks show up mm. you know you got a pickup truck parked on the side of the road they're selling you rambutan <laughs> or like, that's durian yeah <laughs> one fifty yeah. for one kg. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But, okay, custard apple. Please continue. Sorry. Uh, anyhow, the Thailand Science Research and Innovation described the plant as having purple brown colors at the base of its petals and bright red fruits, with each one holding a single seed. I wonder what it tastes like. But it's in the same family as the soursop and c- custard apple, so maybe it's sweet. Mm. I have no idea. So other plants in the same family have been used to treat eye diseases in Southeast Asia before, and there will now be further research to see if this new species can be used for this as well. The researchers say the species needs to be conserved so that human encroachment doesn't destroy it. So, yeah, people don't like go down to, I don't know, Danette district and try to find this plant and try to eat it. I mean, because that sounds like the logical thing to do. It's a new thing. (laughs) You want to do it. That's what you would do if you were at home right now watching right. Good Morning Thailand. Like, Whoa, <laughs> Natty told me about this plant. I must book my tickets. <laughs> to Naratiwad. It Im- goes. Immediately fly there, yeah. hunt this fruit down, and yeah. eat it. And yeah. tell Natty if it was sweet or not. Content, right? It's content all about the king. content. Content is king. Yeah, but don't do that, people. Yeah. We need to do research on it. All right. Our last story today is regarding a naked burglar. Oh, yes. A naked burglar. You've heard of the naked mole rat, but have you heard about the naked burglar who robbed eight houses and also tried to get physical? Yeah. The thing is, he pulled a Winnie the Pooh. Do you know what that means? 
he wasn't no wearing bottoms. underwear. No yeah, bottoms, no um, bottoms. No. So people, oh, not just people, but the owner of the house, Kun Ig, said he heard a strange sound outside his house and then went to check and he scared the naked burglar. And as a consequence, the guy fled, taking only 70 baht from his house. Wow, what a disappointment to all the burglars out there in Thailand. He just took like the chain that <laughs> yeah. was near the door. It's like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll at least take these. Yeah. Anyways, Kun Ig went to check his security camera and then discovered the robber calmly wandering in and out of this house, ignoring all CCTV cameras. The video showed that the thief was aged around 30 to 40 years old. He wore a shirt, a headscarf, and gloves even, but no pants. Oh, people or are underwear. So weird. Or shoes. So he was completely <laughs> Winnie the Pooh down there. Okay. Anyways, poor Winnie the Pooh. Anyhow. You're ruining Winnie the Pooh <laughs> for everyone. Yes. So several locals from a number of houses also said that they encountered similar situations with one person said they almost attacked their 12-year-old daughter. Luckily, nothing happened. And officers from the Hui Tap Tan police station reported that they have shared pictures and videos of the naked burglar with community leaders and sub-district officers are now out to get this guy. But the conclusion of the story is what gets me a little bit riled up. So it says that the officers promised to arrest the man as soon as possible because the case had gained a lot of attention from Thai people, especially on social media, and it damages the reputation of the community. Yeah, I think like half naked guy stealing stuff, guys. Yeah, but I mean, like they shouldn't be worried about the they're damaging the reputation of the community. They should be worrying about the safety of the community. Like yeah. the priority is not correct. Although yeah. the results will be the same, the priority is not right, and that's I have the a problem. Question, though, is he naked before he gets into the house, or does he get into the house, strip down, steal everything, wear his clothes again, and then leaves? Because surely. You'd recognize if a half-naked man was walking around your village. Well, I typically don't look at people's crotches. Well, maybe you should. Okay. I'll start from today. Hello, John. <laughs> nice to meet you like that. John Beach? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just like a random How dare n- you, one John. Leave him alone. <laughs> oh. We must protect John Peak. <laughs> and the mic drops. All right. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those were all the stories and uh, some of the headlines from across Thailand. We're going to take our last break and come back and take some of your questions. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand, and this show is brought to you by Andamanda Water Park. What a way to spend your afternoon at Andamanda Water Park. This next time we go to Phuket, Nadi, I'm going to try to get us to Andamanda Water Park. No way. We'll try to shoot a quick segment there. Oh, please. Say hello to our sponsors. Hello. Please welcome us, Andamanda Water Park. We love you. And if you travel to Phuket next time, please consider visiting Andamanda Water Park. Mm. All right, let's uh, now address some of our feedback and questions from the members. Uh, I would like to enter the chat and welcome the voice of God. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I, I felt like she deserved a mini cap clap today. Oh, oh Sarah would be sad. She would be clapping much louder than that. <laughs> Sarah's long clap is obnoxious. <laughs> okay, so we have a comment from John's Journeys. Uh, this was before the show started. Actually, I was talking with the members a little bit. John's Journey said, love the show. If I miss it, I get cranky. Oh, no. Aww. Yay. Well, John, we're glad that we can bring a little joy and happiness into your life. Yes. We have a question from Scott D. I think you guys can answer this. Scott Even D. I could. Uh, which neighborhood is considered to be more high so between Tongla, Ekamai, or Asok? Tongla. Hmm. Tongla? Yeah. I was going to say... Uh, actually, actually, I don't know why. Let's talk about this. Okay, I'm not like I'm not a real estate um, specialist, but back in 2018, the last stats that I read, Silom is the highest in terms yes. of pricing, mm. and then it's Saton, and then it's Aso. Aso, it's not so, even yeah. Tongla. Weirdly, I don't know why, but mm. like the high end condominiums seem to all be in Tongla. Yeah. I, I'd say Tongla is a good place yeah. to live. Th- there are quite a uh, lot of, like you said. Um, 
high so condominiums, which therefore makes the real estate and living there more expensive than Asok. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Asok, I understand. There's a lot of offices here. It's like right in the middle of everything. It's just like, ooh la la, you've got the MRT, you've got the BTS. And the ARL. Yeah, you've got That's the Asok Sukhumvit oh, airport, airport, rail airport rail link. You've got the Sukhumvit road where you can go up and down Sukhumvit. You've got the Pechbury road to go up and down like outside to the city. It's just... And Near tollways too. Our office is here. Tiger's located in Nassau. What more do you want? We're bringing the property value up like by 50 million. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so, Tongla though, I think is very desirable. High-end restaurants, clubs, party areas, extremely nice and expensive condos. It just feels more upscale, doesn't it? Mm. Asok feels like a working place. You live and you work here, you're mm. in the hub, you're on the go. Mm. Tongla is a bit more high high class. You know, you you, you want to have a nice dinner. Oh, it's it's right. Oh yeah, like 20 actually meters away. The entire yeah. road of Tongla exactly. is just like bars and bars, high so restaurants left and right. Restaurants. Yeah. 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 You've got Argentinian steakhouse El Gaucho. Wouldn't you like that? It's like, yeah, you come to work. It's like, where did you have uh, dinner last night? El, El Gaucho. Gaucho. And, and the people are like, oh, you live in Tong La. Oof. Sorry, I had to make that face. I wish I'd been to El Gaucho. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Prom Hall? Prom Hall is overrated. No. They, they have very really nice. So. No, no, it was Tong La, Ekamai, or Asok. Oh, oh ah. yeah, Ekamai. Ekamai, Ekamai is, is like more not... residential, isn't yeah. it? It's like when my friends in university grew up. So it has a lot of schools. Uh, it has a lot of condos where a lot of people live. It's I feel like it's congested, just condos with people living in it. It has a very big Indian community for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say it's a bit more residential. It's still in the hub of Sukhumvit, but yeah. Mm. So, so you're saying if you want so Asok, Indian Asok slash wait, Tongla than everything else. Wait, in so the if you want area. Indian neighbors, go yeah. to Ekamai. If you want Japanese neighbors, go to Tongla. As, yeah. If you want cool people like us, come to but Asok. Asok's, Asok's very Japanesey, isn't it? Mm, Is that a word? Less, less, less Japanesey now, I think. Okay, this is okay. Mm. I didn't even notice. I, I don't know if that's a nice yeah. word to say. Yeah, Scott, it's okay. Scott just started <laughs> a whole new thing. <laughs> You both. Okay, I will I will smoothly go to the next one. Very smooth. Or, yes, very Wait, smooth. I have a question for Scott D. Where's the best place in Chicago? Oh, yeah. Is it near the Chicago Museum? I know they I have the best whiskey there, museum. though. Yum, 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 Ooh. yum, yum. All right. Okay, so about the foreigners being able to buy land and houses, well, some foreigners, Mojo82 asks, what if a Farang has a Thai child that they will eventually inherit the land to? What? W what if a couple has a Thai... What if a Farang has a Thai child? Yeah. Well, they'll get uh, a Thai passport automatically and he can own his own land how much ever he on. wants. Are you talking about a foreigner and foreigner having a baby in Thailand? The baby still doesn't become yeah. automatically Thai national, well, though. I, I think he's talking mm. about Hafi, right? If a Hafi, then I well, guess the wife Hafi, is yeah. the, the owner of that house, no? So, yeah, he'll eventually just yeah, inherit, inherit it, it. from yeah. the mom. Yeah. Not dad, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Or vice versa. <laughs> Larry Conley said that 40 million baht is excessive. It is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like, what I mean is, like, it, I'm being extremely niche and extremely, like, going down one path. I'm talking about, like, people like me. Like, oh, it's all no, about you, Jerry. It, it is all about me. <laughs> There's no chance for me to, like, let's say graduate. I've made it to the age of 30 and I'm like, now I'm working. I'm like, I can't afford. I can't, I, even even if I can afford to buy a house, let's say a small house, 2 million baht on the outskirts of Bangkok. I've been here for 20 years. I love Thailand. I feel Thai. I can't own that land. I just feel like, oh, it's it's just a bit of a shame. It's like, oh, all right, you know, I'm going to settle for mm. a condo in the outskirts. In I have a feeling my earlier comments about this story, mm. I'm going to get tons of hate from people. No, 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 people. no. Because I, th I, think, I think a lot of people agree with your with your thought as well. I think a lot of, last time when we were talking about it, you know, at the end of the day, like, we are, you know, guests in this country and we're in another country. This is Thailand and there's Thai people and they have, they should have first priority on their own country and ability to buy land. We should always be second and that's just a fact of it. Imagine if someone came, you know, if I was living back in India or let's say if, if I'm from Dubai or Australia and I can't buy my, land in my own country because it's just owned by foreigners that would build resentment so i completely for agree and country. understand that yeah yeah okay, so for about the thai youtuber being abducted 
the uh, it's his comment is regarding like the places that he chose to visit. So Dominic Chan said Burkina Faso is interesting, like the location that he chose, but not Afghanistan though. Like that the, one was shocking for everyone. I think yeah. I think there was another female YouTuber actually, and it, I forgot something Rome alone. I roam alone. I roam alone. Yeah, mm. yeah. So she also went to um, Afghanistan when there was a war going on, and she got so much hate for that. Also, oh like, how dare you put yourself in danger? And like, if anything were to happen to you, then the Thai embassies will have to get involved to take you out of there. Blah blah blah. All that, all that nonsense. So they felt like she was putting herself in danger, where it will kind of um, be. People, cumbersome yeah. for a lot more people because then people feel like are you just doing this for attention yeah mm, well yeah. clearly otherwise she wouldn't be a youtuber but huh. <laughs> but, but you know like um like us yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> like us i like attention anyways I mean, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair for us to say that we don't like the attention <laughs> sometimes we on, go yeah, especially over the top the fact that we're on camera every day <laughs> yeah like, no, I don't like attention. I don't like the camera pointing at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, for the survey on uh, fake banknotes, Kazna said, iron all your US dollars. Ah. You can. So I had to research uh, a little bit while you were talking about it. So the US currency is a mixture of 75% cotton and 25% linen. So when you search up, can you oh. iron your US dollars? Oh. They say yes, but they tell you how. Like, you oh. know, obviously, lay it on a flat surface. Soft cotton. Whoa. So it's cotton mixed with linen. That's so apparently. crazy. So you can actually make a whole bed sheet out of it. I guess out of, so. Out like, dollar bills. Yeah, you have a dollar I don't know how sleep. I don't think you'd be. want to sleep yeah. with that. But uh, that's where Kazna like jumped in and said, like, yeah, for, so, for the US dollars, you can do that. But for Australian dollars, like, that's a no-no because it's made mm. out of poly polymer. Yeah, like, I think. Wow. Yeah. If you do it with $100 bills, you're too much of a high roller and you probably can't afford it. But then if you do it with too many $1 bills and people start to question how you got all those $1 bills. Hmm. Especially if the serial code is in sequence. No, not necessarily. I was going for something else. Oh. You know, because you, when you go to certain establishments, you only tip in... On you mean... Okay, yeah. let's keep going. Yeah. So back on the fake banknotes in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's laughing. Weston, Weston Hepworth said, I came across one once in Patong. It looked more colorful than the standard 1,000 baht notes, but one side had a cartoon character on it. He still has the fake banknote. I think maybe, whoa, no. What if I accidentally circulated that and now he has my banknote? <laughs> Because yours was a cartoon? Yeah, it was a oh, cartoon. yours was, was a, a cartoon. A I thought clown cartoon. Oh, maybe he'll clarify that. But he said that on the other side, it's a cartoon character. Oh, That's really interesting. Like, yeah. You guys got it. <laughs> yeah, it was so strange. I wish I still had it. I don't know where mm. it is. Maybe it's with him. <laughs> okay. Okay, so before you guys even talked about Club One Paraya, Sick Puppy already made a comment about it. So I don't know if he knew we were going to report on Sick it. Sick Puppy. Sick Puppy said... Tiger meetup at Club One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys talked about Club One. So I was like, oh, wait, you knew that he we were going to talk knows. about he it? He knows now. Yeah. He can seize it. Yeah, but... but I mean, at this point, it's yeah, it's probably going to be closed down. It's going to be open yeah. for a rental venue. Club One Pataya Tiger meetup. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Sick Puppy is going to be our man on the ground. Sick Puppy, give us some info. <laughs> and there, there was a whole snitching issue with this club, right? Yeah, so John Peake said, sometimes it doesn't pay to open your mouth. Oh, yes. yeah. So that's yes. what he snitched. <sighs> All right, any last comments? I think Scott D answered um, the best places Lin in Chicago. Lin I don't know how to... Lincoln Road? Lincoln Park, Lincoln Edison Park. Park, Old Norwood Park. Wow. For families for Old Norwood Park. Lincoln Park, Edison Park, or? Old Norwood Park. Old Norwood Park. Sounds cooler. Where are you from? No Lincoln. Bucktown oh, no and Wicker, Wicker Park for hipsters. Hipsters. Wait, I like hips. Hipsters. <laughs> I like hips. <laughs> okay. Like hips? <laughs> hipsters. Hip <for> <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, before I get to yeah. the another whole comment, I just wanted to address this one. When you talked about the naked burglar, John's journey said a very flashy thief. Mm. A very flashy <laughs> thief indeed. Very he was flash. just roaming around. Yeah. Like, like he was at his own house. I mean, would you 
feel comfortable doing that in your own home? Why wouldn't you? Half Wait, are you naked? fully clothed all the time? In my home? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh... Oh no! We're not gonna imagine <laughs> okay. stuff, please. Did not imagine. All right. No, yes, all yes. Right. Um, Swiftly wait. moving on. Yeah, yeah. So f- when you you did the ch- the chipmunk Hello. voice a while ago, like 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 a very it's high more pitch. It's her Stitch voice. Stitch like voice. Lilo and Stitch. Stitch. Yeah. So Dominic Chan said, like, that's a chipmunk voice. <laughs> John's Journey said, or Donald Duck voice. Yeah. Hello. Can you do a Donald Duck? I I can't, but one of my friends can do the the really well. I can't do it. Oh. Okay. That was my mm. best attempt. Nice. Oh, that hurt my brain a little bit. <laughs> Maybe it's small, and then it was hitting against my skull. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Anyways, so Weston. <laughs> do no brain size has nothing to do with. <laughs> oh really? Yes. Intelligence. Okay, good. No, not just oh. that, but like also like just, just because I'm bigger than you doesn't mean my brain's bigger. Oh, than okay, you. good. <laughs> That's good. a lay. Okay. Nice. All right. Weston said he'll send. He'll take a picture and uh, send it into uh, what? He'll take a picture of the fake bank note and oh. set it in oh, yeah. your email. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's been a while actually. We've heard uh, from. It's been a while since we've heard from Weston. So yeah. glad you're Hello. Uh, talking to us. And uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, for now, I'd like to thank all the members for joining us for the live chat, and uh, also Natty, Carmel, Don, and thank Hot you. Behind the Buttons. Everyone else is. I don't even know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, until then, we hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Um, if not. Be quiet. Don't Give us say some anything. feedback on how we can improve oh. it. Uh, okay. We will see you live again tomorrow. We need a word for today. If you've made it so far today. Burkino Faso. Word. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've made it so far today, um, you are one of the Tiger Family elites, and uh, we w- appreciate you. Uh, today's word is Burkina Faso. What? Okay. Burkina Faso. Say nothing else. Until then, we will see you live again tomorrow morning. Take care. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.